The next episode on our countdown aired way back in season two and featured Anthony, a retired Navy vet who'd been dating a guy online named Mark for seven months. We uncovered the real guy behind the Mark profile. Whoa. Whoa. That's hey. him. And his name was Framel. All you did was play a whole bunch of mind games with me. You made me look stupid in front of my family. And you made me look stupid to my damn self. Anthony's hard feelings were certainly warranted, but Max and I hoped things might go a bit more smoothly the next day. Turns out, though, Anthony was still pretty raw. I just want you to own up to just being a up person about that. I was a so you're not about wrong. to put me back in that place in my life. I said I was up then. I'm not up now. It is what it is. Don't sit over there it talking is what to it is, me any kind of way that you want to talk to me. Because I tell you, I'm, I'm in done. your house I'm and done. I will still pop you I'm, in your house. When it comes to the point where you put your hands on me, try it. Own up to and it. And I did. We're going to get the same ass excuses from you. I can't over make you believe again. it. So what? Because you're a liar. I think we were getting somewhere. <laughs> I really do. You, you can't, they can't all go smoothly. I mean, like, sometimes you need the, bl the blow yes, ups need yes. to happen. Well, that's because that's real. Anyway, after taking a little breather, Anthony agreed to come back inside and hear from Mel out. I guess I can listen to whatever you got to say, but. I really care about you. I don't want you going through life thinking everybody's going to lie to you. I dealt with a lot of pain because. Me liking guys was really wrong, I guess, for me and my family. Well, I accept your apology and I forgive you. I have to say, though, that is one of our more emotional episodes. Wouldn't you agree? Look, Anthony is a sensitive guy. For sure. We've definitely encountered all kinds of people on this show, and there are certainly some people who are just more prone to crying. There are criers. <laughs> And they're laughers. <laughs> then there's just stone walls. Those are the worst. We don't like those because they show no emotion. Criers. Take a look. So sick and tired of you telling me that I'm lying, but I'm sitting here crying. You can't manipulate it with just I'm by not crying. I'm manipulating anything. You cry, and then we can't ask you anything. That's else. not true. <laughs> I just don't want to do that today. I will never care for nobody again. I will never love. I'm just going to end up close to myself just to be away from everything and everything. Montage. Pull yourself together, man. Jesus, we're making a special here. <laughs> I said no crying. Next up on our Catfish The Aftershock Countdown is a prime example of an episode that's received so much attention for its surprising reveal that few people remember what went down the following day. In season three, Max and I were contacted by a woman named Carmen, who believed her cousin, Antoine, was getting catfished by a guy named Tony. The reason why you Stupid idiot. You can never find who Tony is because I'm Tony. What's up? What's going on? Why the f would you do that? Because. Three my years old, because that f ain't You cool. should have never That's called me a fat ass Kelly Price. I mean, can we just talk about that? That has become one of our, it's probably Timeless. one of the trademark lines of our show. You should have never That's called me a fat ass Kelly Price. You get mad off of that little bitty boy though. That's it's life. Deal with it. Don't talk to me ever no more, and I mean that. What voice are you using to talk to him? The Tony voice. What? <laughs> <laughs> it still, it still gets me. The Tony voice. <laughs> That's the scene you're all familiar with. But here's what went down the following day. What's your story? I catfish people and I'm cool with it. You don't have to be cool with the things. I don't know. Are you proud? You're proud of it? Yeah, I'm proud of myself because I do a damn good job. Why even waste your breath saying anything to me anymore? I don't want you to make other people feel like 
I make people feel like because they want to, because they're already a shit. Wanted to feel like already Did I want to feel like You already You ain't That Your argument is you ain't You already Like Taking a break. You guys are coming outside. Right. Guys need to get back in there and hear her side. I just don't feel like she deserves the couch time. Hear her out. Got, got heated. We're not just hosts. We get, we get in. This was probably the first time where I lost my cool. And everyone was kind of upset that Neve did it. Not surprisingly, Antoine wanted nothing to do with Carmen after what she did to him. In fact, it wasn't until we brought them together two years later that the two cousins finally spoke again for the first time. Look, you doing that off the chain, but at the end of the day, everybody better like my cousin because I still love her. You my family. Right. You get me who You gotta admit, three years is a long time to commit to a practical joke. She committed. She sure she, did. She tripled down. Yeah. The next episode is from way back in season one. A guy named Rod hit us up because he needed help navigating a tricky situation. Rod had met a trans woman named Ebony on an LGBTQ dating website, and although he had initially been hesitant about dating someone who was transgender, he soon developed feelings for her. The problem was that not only did Rod suspect Ebony might be hiding something from him, it turned out he had been using a fake name and profile all along. In addition to putting the fake picture, I told her my name was KJ, and Ebony has never seen a real picture of me in four years. Max and I still had a lot of questions. Do you have any suspicions about her? You know, I've been thinking the whole time that this is Ebony, and if I get there and I see her and it's not her, then... You realize how hypocritical that is, right? <laughs> no, I'm serious. The obvious logical next step was to simply give Ebony a call and try to arrange a meetup. She is going to dominate the conversation. So you're going to gently point her in a direction and hope right. she goes there. This might actually be the most nervous I've ever seen you before a call. Yeah, it was season one. I hadn't really done a lot of these. I wasn't the seasoned pro that I am now. I'm just telling you, KJ wants to meet you. You know that. Of course I know that. Are you going to be rude about it? I'm, I'm not concerned about what we want. I'm only concerned about what he wants. Well, he wants to meet you immediately. Well, bring him here. Wow. It's amazing I survived that call, but we got through it, and, you know, it was game on. You just don't look like your pictures at all. The pictures I sent you, they wasn't my pictures. They was my cousin pictures, so my name right. Excuse me? It's Rod. Your name? Yeah, it's not KJ. Your name is Rod. Yeah. I was actually nervous and just really, really feeling bad because it's something that I wanted to tell you. I'm not a transgender male. I was wrong by giving you the wrong name and sending you around, you know, not my right picture, so. And you kept it up for four years? Yeah, so I'm apologize to you. I don't know. I don't know. I forgive you. <laughs> you thought it was a happy ending. You thought it should have just ended there with everyone happy. Well, how do you feel about her being a woman? It feel weird, because I don't know why she wouldn't even, you know, went to me from the get-go that she was a woman. So we took Rod to meet with Ebony the following day to hopefully clear the air. The things quickly took a turn. What I wanted to talk to you about it was, was with me. Get it out. I'm not trying to say I use you, I took advantage of you, but you sending me money, you paying my cell phone bill, those are some of the reasons why I just continue to talk to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a huge slap in the face because I was genuine. Yes, I did lie about one small thing. Is that was that a big you thing. You lied about wasn't small. OK, thing. it wasn't small. Whatever, shut up. Everything else was real. The feelings, the everything that I see was all real. What you are saying is you used me. That one sentence that you just said, you pissed on everything. If ugly is what the f you want, ugly is what I'll give you. OK, I'm gone. OK. Fortunately, Ebony turned out to be a pretty understanding person. She found it in her heart to 
offer her friendship to Rod. Before you leave, I want to let you know that I would still love to be your friend. OK? That's cool. You mad at me? <laughs> ah! Good luck with everything. OK, thank you. Stay fabulous. Always. Always. <laughs> I kind of miss Ebony a little bit. She's very expressive and yeah, bubbly. She's got a lot of a, her very leans into her emotions. Yeah. Uh, if I'm being honest, I think she would be a great talk show host. She's a woman. She's a mom. And she's fabulous. Join Ebony as she talks fashion. You look nice. Relationships. Did I want to fall in love with a man? No, I did not. Get to know <laughs> Ebony and find yourself. <laughs> Who are you? Like, who are you? Stay fabulous! That Ebony, she's a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> We've never had two hopeless hook up. An identical twin. <gasps> Everybody in Hawaii is in on this. <gasps> That's insane. We've never seen anything like this. The catfish sent you the real guy's Facebook page. Come on! 